Hey everybody, I got to thinking, it's been a while since I did a video like this. Most of them have been some little tiny one minute shorts. I'm here in the shop doing some stuff and I thought I'd do a quick video on a customized knife and I've had some people asking about it in the, in the last few months. And as of recent, I uh, joined with SOB Rifles to make some knives for them. For customers that are gonna be buying their rifles, they're gonna get an SOB uh, knife with each rifle that they purchase. Um, but uh, it was funny because in talking with Chuck, um, it was one of those things about what are we going to do about the shape or the handle thickness and width and the length of the knife and stuff like that. And uh, he had the benefit of, I have several knives that I've been making and a lot of them are my bushcraft knives and such, but I did have a couple like the Warrior Poet Society knife and the Kit Badger knife that I make. So I had those as well as the 307. I had my Rogue, I had a uh, uh, some Pups, some Camp Knives. Um, I had the Forgotten Coast Companion. Uh, so I brought them all out to his shop and him and the guys all got to hold on the knives and feel the weights and the thicknesses, see the lengths and such and the materials firsthand. And I really like that when it comes to making a custom knife. But I've had a lot of people that reach out in the past and as of recently actually, the custom and border patrol knife that I did. It was really hard to convey a lot of information to someone like Luke at the time because it was trying to get him to understand what I was trying to convey as a knife maker. And ultimately after a long time of not only just me moving and the surgeries and rebuilding, but also the, the uh, idea of what materials might work best for what they wanted to use and how it felt um, the good thing is Luke already owned one of my knives, so he already had an idea about quality workmanship and the type of blade he wanted, and then we just went from there. Uh, but I thought that I'd do is I would use the SOB rifles uh, knife that we're going to be doing. Don't have a name for it other than maybe the Sniper Frog. Uh, that's their logo or monogram. So, but I thought I'd show you a little bit about what it, what I recommend people to do, what I do for you as a maker, and maybe. It'll give you a better idea why it might cost more money to not only just have like a custom knife made off of my website, but actually work with a knife maker, me or somebody else, and the time it takes and the resources that are required. And uh, maybe it put things a little bit more in perspective. So let me grab these things and I'll show you what we're doing. Okay. One of the first things I always tell people is when they have ideas on knives and what they would like to do, I tell them the first thing you want to do is just draw it out. Just draw a knife that you think you would like. It doesn't have to be anything really fancy or detailed. Take your inspiration, whether it's from two or three or four different knives, and just kind of sketch it out. Use a ruler if you want. But right now, all I do is tell people is just get a piece of paper and a pencil and draw some basic shapes. It doesn't matter if it's a big sheet of like legal paper or just regular eight and a half by 11. Just draw something out that you like. It could be a picture this big, it could be a picture this big. Draw that out first and kind of play with those shapes. Then after that, get the ruler, and after you've worked out the bugs and you're kind of getting the flow, the artistic feel, then you go ahead and you get a ruler and you get an idea of what the width, meaning, um, we'll use this word poet knife for example, the width of the knife, meaning the height from the blade to the top of the spine, what's the width of that knife? The length would be the tip of the blade all the way to the back of the, uh, the tang right there. So you've got your width and your length, okay? And then lastly, you'll be worrying about your thickness, but I'm getting ahead of myself there. So when you're drawing stuff out, the first two things you wanna figure out is how long of a blade do you want? And then how wide of a blade do you want? And then you go ahead and you get your ruler and you draw out a long rectangle, whatever shape you want, whether it's gonna be a out of two inch material or inch and a half like this Warrior Poet STPT is made out of. You're gonna take your ruler, just draw an inch and a half by, this is seven inches, so inch and a half by seven, inch and a half or inch and three quarters, inch and five eighths, two inches, whatever it is, by whatever length. Make a rectangle, a nice long rectangle like that. After you've done the rectangle, now take that, that inspirational sketch that you've done, okay, with your crayons or whatever else to my former Marines, uh, take that sketch and now you're gonna take more time and you're gonna draw within the parameters you've set for yourself. 
That's gonna help you put things a little bit more in detail about the curves of a spine, the curves of a spine like this, what's the swoop of your belly, uh, what kind of point will it might have, the handle shape, thumb placement, things like that. You're gonna be able to work that way. Once you've done that, then you can go ahead, work with a maker like myself. You can email that to me, you can mail it to me, you can bring it to my shop and show it to me, and then we move on from there. Next, what I would say is to help keep someone like myself out of the loop and keep your costs down. After you've drawn your knife, um, like for instance, you have a shape like this, okay, we have a piece of paper, we cut it out like that. What you're gonna do next is, before you cut it out into this kind of shape, okay, this is, yes, whoops. Edit that. Uh, this is the uh, sniper frog, okay? Once we cut that out, or even before I cut it out, what I did is I sat with uh, Chuck and I drew out the shape of the shoulders, where the pins would go, choyo, the blade profile, like the grind and stuff like that. And then we come out to something like this right here. So we come into something like this. Now we have a basic shape. We have our width, meaning from the tip of this knife and the tip of the tang to the spine of the knife. We have our overall width and our overall length. After that, you know, you really can't get a feel for what the knife will be like holding a piece of paper. So what I tell people to do is take your stencil and go ahead and you can do a couple different things. Either one, take some cardboard that's pretty thick. This is about uh, eighth inch or so thick. Take a couple pieces of cardboard like this and trace it out and then cut it. So you could take this like with some uh, spray adhesive or something and you could apply your knife to that right there. And then you'll just use a, a Stanley knife or a straight blade or an X-Acto knife and just cut that shape out. Roughly cut the shape out. I would say do a first piece like this and then afterwards you could always use two because your knife is gonna be thicker than that. The other option is you can use something like this melamine I have or this, this particle type board. It's white on here. It's almost like a dry eraser board. It's black on the other side. This is an eighth inch thick but it's a lot more rigid than simple cardboard is. Uh, the, the nice thing about this is this is what I usually use for my knives for customers is because of this, I can cut out the basic rectangle shape. Okay, when I take this, I can glue this on there, cut the rectangle shape. Then I use my bandsaw and I use my grinder and I, I shape this more and then I hand sand and finish it all up. But what I really like to do for folks is I have a piece of aluminum. I buy basic stock aluminum from your box store, like a Menards, Lowe's, Home Depot, something like that. I spray that dicum, the steel layout fluid. I spray this, and then what I do is I will take this stencil like this, and I will lay it out on there, and I'll trace it out for that. Or I'll make a couple of these. I'll spray adhesive it to, I'll spray adhesive on this, apply it to this, and I'll take it to my bandsaw and I'll cut it out out of aluminum. And then I'll take it to my grinder, I'll shape it, and then I'll hand finish it all off. And then that will give you something like this. This is made out of aluminum and it's made out of that piece of steel, that piece of aluminum right there. So <clears throat> what I do then is I have this aluminum and now you have something you can hold on to. It's rigid, it's not gonna bend and flex, it's more tactile and it gives you a better feel of what your knife's gonna be like. But you're not really there completely because it is only an eighth inch thick and it doesn't have scales on it. Now there's two different things you can do from there. Now again, also real quick, you do your, your shoulders, your blade profile, your like your plunge line, your pin layout, stuff like that. But after that point, you have two options. Myself, I don't do this part because I have knives I can give to somebody and say, well, this thickness is a pretty much the same thickness as this knife. And if you don't want a fat knife, well, this is, the scales, this little quarter inch micarta, canvas micarta, how do you like that width? And they can kind of get an idea. They might not like the knife, but they can kind of get a feel for, you know, that, that thickness. Now, some makers can do this. I haven't done it, I haven't need to, needed to. You can take quarter inch material, if that's what you think your handle is, and then you can apply it 
to both sides of the knife, shape it, do everything else, and basically treat it like it's a regular knife. And then do pins and everything else. And then you got an aluminum knife with canvas micarta scales on it. So it gives you kind of the look and the feel of what you're going to be getting. I don't normally do that because, again, I have a bunch of other knives. But you can do that with micartas. You can do that with um, more aluminum. You can cut aluminum and just shape the handle material. And then just use like super glue. Rough the aluminum on both sides and apply super glue on them. And then have your, your aluminum shaped like this and then glued on there. And that'll give you a good feel. You can hand sand stuff for the basic person. Uh, for myself, I only go to a stencil like that. But what I do is I try to make, once the stencil's there, I feel it and I know the person that wants it. I look at them, I talk with them, I get a feel for what they might want and what sells and what the majority of people like. Not unique people, but the majority of people. And I sometimes will make another variation of this knife, which I did. I took this knife and I just made a few little tiny changes to it. I made it about a half inch shorter. I made it about a, a 16th wider here, eighth inch wider there. Blade length was important, so I kept that the same. Took it to Chuck, we talked everything over, and ultimately he decided on the one that I made. He said this one. We even stamped it. <laughs> the, the sniper with his little sniper frog and the SOB rifle logo, so we know which one we're gonna use. This was his original drawing. This was my take on what I thought he would like better and what would work better for everybody that might have been interested in a knife. So now we'll go to the next step. Okay, now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take you over to this end of the shop because what I would do is I would talk to my customers about, well, what kind of handle material you're gonna want? Meaning the scales, what are you gonna want on your knife? We can get to the pins and everything else later, but I think that's another topic. This is just giving you an overall idea of what it would take to, to design your knife. Now, what I was able to do, unlike some makers, is I was able to provide Chuck a lot of different varieties of both materials and colors, but also the shapes and designs. For instance, I took something like this camp knife here that has, this is the canvas micarta, but this isn't natural. And I was able to give him an idea on what that was like because this one is sanded at about 120 grit. Um, I could take, again, the olive drab like you saw on the, the Warrior Poet knife. I could take this knife, take it to him and show him, well, this one's at 220 grit. You can feel the difference and you can see the look, olive drab versus grit, the, the natural. Then I was also able to take him to do the canvas like this companion that I did for Forgotten Coast Canine. This is black canvas micarta right here. And that's finished at a 400 grit finish. So he was able to feel the differences of grit finishes. Some knives like uh, this one here, this Rogue I showed him, this is my personal Rogue. I've had this for several years. It's actually one of the first ones I made. This is black canvas micarta, but it's only sanded at 60 grit versus something like this Forgot Coast Canine knife. This is sanded at 400 grit you can see the difference. It's the exact same material. It's just hand sanded differently. There is some oil on this, but because it's been polished up more and it gets that coating on it, uh, like a little oil or um, a, um, like a gun coat kind of sealant, it gives it that nice finish, but it's smoother. Versus this, you can feel the roughness to it. And that was something too I was able to convey to somebody like Chuck. Um, Next thing was, is I was able to show him the different types of woods. This is a desert ironwood, but this desert ironwood is a lot darker than this desert ironwood right here. So this is my personal 307, and this is desert ironwood, but then this is also desert ironwood. And again, this one's finished at uh, 220 grit. This one was also 220 grit, but because the woods are natural and they change both with the sanding and shaping of a knife but also with your hand oils it's always nice to convey that to an individual about what they like do they like lighter color woods like maples or do they, do they like a darker wood like a madagascar ebony do you like something like a spalted maple that's been dyed and stabilized in black so you can see all the spalt that goes through these cracks and everything 
So those are different ideas. And they're all different things that you, as the customer and future knife owner, need to kind of take into consideration. What its purpose is, what its use is, and so on. Yes, you can get to all different things about blade profiles, uh, why something like a Warncliffe or a sheep's foot might be better for you versus a large swooping drop point like this. Um, go to something like a Scandi grind, like you see here on the Kit Badger Woodsman Shank here, the Outdoorsman Shank, whatever we're calling them again. But uh, you could do something like that. Uh, and then handle shapes and feels. Do you like something like this more swooping with the belly, like, like this here, it's got more of a curved natural feel for your hand. Do you like something generic, like this simple broomstick handle like this one, or what you see on the Forgotten Coast Companion? Um, that all plays into the final designs of your knife, because some of those designs, like we just showed you, wouldn't work well on this, the shape and the feel of it, but we do have more of a generic kind of feel for your three fingers, but a good finger choil right there to get into placement. You also have to figure stuff about your choils themselves. The choil right here, the ricasa, those kind of things. All of this goes into making a knife specifically for you. Um, and I hope this isn't too much of an in-depth video, but it's really hard not to del delve in too deep. Uh, that's why I'm gonna stay out of pins and everything else because that's for another story. And again, it's a personal preference or maybe if you're trying to convey or express an opinion or a feeling of uh, the Gadsden or military or maybe uh, initials for a family or a loved one, just some decorative like the campfire pin knife, things like that. So I just wanted to share this with you and basically introduce you to the new sniper frock. Uh, so I'm getting steel ready. It's supposed to be here today. I'm gonna start shaping and cutting all these knives. I might just do a video on making the sniper frog just to kind of share with you all. Uh, they are going to be a limited run, and I think the only way to get it is to go through SOB rifles. I will not be selling these on my website. I will have one with me all the time, like all my knives, so people can see what I make, different feels, and say I like something like that. That's not a problem. But these knives here will be going through SOB rifles, and as far as I know right now, the only way you'll get one is through them, and possibly only to be able to buy a rifle from them to get it. So it's kind of neat. They will be serialized too, so that's kind of cool. But anyhow, gang, I do appreciate it. Thank you for the time. This was just a quick impromptu video. I came out here with Dutch and I got some knives to work on here like Eric and Tyler's. So I was gonna get that going. I got more knives here because I'm going to that uh, um, Loveland, Colorado for the Overland Expo event, Mountain West, this year at the end of August. Uh, we're gonna do that. Um, so hopefully I'll see some of you guys there, but keep an eye out for more videos. Hopefully I'll try to do a little bit more content. But until then, you take it easy. Have a good one. We'll talk to you later. Bye.